Okay, so my personal theory is it. My personal theory is that there are about three kinds of people who enter PhDs. There are the ones like myself who just love to explore new ground, love to research about new things. There are people who are really adept at solving problems and there are people who go to university for no go to get a PhD for no reason except to go somewhere else on afterwards. Which even in mathematics does happen quite a lot. You know, if someone gets a good mathematics thesis with respect to engineering, they might end up going to Renault or I know some woman who uh, did very well in, in her thesis and now she's working for the information communication company that she wants to do. And that's all well and good. Now I'd say that those first, sorry, that final category of people, those ones who are just going in it for the PhD. But anyway, um, there are people who do it for that and they're going to have the hardest time emotionally, I think. Because... Um, Honestly, I think the most important thing about a PhD is that you are in love with your subject in some respects. You must, I shouldn't say must, but it's, it would be extremely advantageous to you if you can set up some kind of uh, mechanism by which your work makes you happy, you know, sends all those dolphins and serotonin and whatever it is in your brain comes flowing in when you think about your work and if you're at that kind of state then you're going to be creative and then you're not going to see it as work and you'll do loads of it and you'll be a researcher so it's tricky for those people uh, who just want to have a PhD for the sake of it I mean there is there are very good reasons for having a PhD it does get you into some good jobs for sure um, but you know, as I say, it's very difficult for people like that if they don't have that emotional investment. Okay then, so what about another class of people we were discussing? What about the ones who are really good problem solvers? They got really great grades in all their exams. They, they asked their friends, what should I do? They said, hey man, you, you always get A's, you should be, do a PhD. And then they say, Really? Are you sure? And yeah, okay. They end up on the PhD, but perhaps not as interested in exploration as they are problem solving. Now, I've heard it said a few times that mathematicians can be separated into those who love to solve problems, often, un um, you know, famously unsolved problems and those that love to propose them or to create new research. Um, I think I'm definitely of the latter. I, I uh, really enjoy what happens when you put a load of new things in a new box and see how they interact. But um, there are some also absolutely brilliant people at solving things, and these are utterly instrumental to the, um, to the kind of evolution of mathematics and those people for those people doing PhDs um, I think it has to do with your supervisor somewhat I I had a I had a job for a while as an associate sorry as an assistant professor at, um, at Tsinghua University which was like one of the top universities in the world and it was like scary how much these guys knew. I was, I didn't stay for very long, um, but while I was there, I did a course on advanced theoretical computer science, and I was throwing problems at these guys in you know weekly problems, and they were returning them back completed within two hours. That was supposed to be a whole day, a whole week's worth of work. They were really intimidatingly intelligent. Um, they were problem solvers and under the right kind of PhD supervisor they could be very very good. I, I, I might be wrong here but 
I might say that Terence Tao is another amazing problem solver. The guy has a huge amount of intelligence. He draws from lots and lots of different places and works very, very hard on a specific problem, like the problem of the aromatic frequencies, uh, aromatic sequences in the primes, and makes an absolutely massive result. There's nothing wrong with people like that. Um, the only thing is, one has to cultivate another side to it, which is about asking questions. Because sooner or later, um, that becomes a more and more important skill. Okay, so the third type then. The people who just um, are very interested in the subject. Well, sorry, the people who just want to explore mathematics for its own sake. I think um, people like that, for someone to describe themselves like that, they'd have had to already have done a bit of exploration on their own. I mean, before my PhD, I had sort of booklets and booklets of uh, little scratches and scribblings of um, different ideas, you know, counting how many graphs there are on five or six vertices, and um, even some sort of crazy ideas and even a couple of theorems. Um, and I did that just out of spare time and curiosity. And if that idea, if that makes you go, that's weird, why would you want to do that when you were doing a really stressful undergrad course? Well then, I'd say to you, maybe a PhD isn't for you. Because essentially, all a PhD is, if you have a relaxed supervisor like mine, is just go wherever you want, do whatever you want, and in three years, hand me a book which is brilliant. Okay, it's not quite that much freedom. Um, you will get your, uh, you will have to see people once every so often and hand in min uh, minor pieces of coursework. But essentially, it's along those kinds of lines. And so, if you don't do mathematical research for fun, if you have no intention of spending sort of part of your summer holiday um, looking at some um, maths or, you know, um, trying to understand something which is interesting to you, then I really wouldn't bother enrolling because you will probably find it quite miserable. Um, I'm not saying you wouldn't pass, but I mean, out of the... Um, I think about half of the people I did PhDs with passed. And the ones that failed, they definitely didn't fail because they weren't smart enough. Um, well, oh, it's, a, it's a silly thing to say. I, I shouldn't talk about intelligence so linearly. But they, did, they definitely didn't fail because they sort of were just too bad at learning stuff that they couldn't pass. They failed because they just got depressed. They got depressed of the research life because they weren't used to doing research for fun. And one has to get used to doing research for fun. 